Chapter 8 Taking advantage of the situation, Captain Singh gives Stinger a shove forward as he's led with his hands cuffed behind him. Stinger grits his teeth and mumbles out the side of his mouth. You're enjoying this, aren't you? There's a nasty little glint of pleasure in her eyes as she replies. It's not every day that I get to push you around, old man. But I like that it's happening with increasing frequency. Enjoy it while you can, Mika, he says flatly, only remembering to use her title as captain too late, and Famulus appears around the corner. It earns him a slap upside the back of the head. You don't have the right to call me that anymore. You'll refer to me only as captain. Do you understand? Stinger shakes it off and mutters a grudging, Yes, Captain. Mr. Apini, it warms my heart to see you in cuffs again, and as humble as ever. How charming! Famulus quips at his expense. We can take him from here, Captain Singh. The prisoner, as annoying as he is, is under my care, and will remain so. He's just being loaned to you for questioning. He says he has information that may be of value. It will be a while before his lordship and I finish going through the data, Famulus warns. Stinger pipes up. You want to have the info I have before you make your decisions. I know who the spy is. Primly and deliberately, the dear spy stops and turns in place to accent her words. Do tell, Mr. Apini. The clock is ticking. I'll tell you, if you let Bridget go. I can prove her innocence and reveal the idea of the culprit. Stinger offers the tidbit. What of her involvement with Mr. Knight? That's hard implication to refute, Famulus probes. The rat is innocent too, as loathed as I am to say it. Stinger's face is painted with shades of disgust. Tell me what you know, and we'll do what we can. Famulus tests the waters. Like hell I will. Not after our last deal. His words are spit on her feet. I'm unsure his lordship can trust you either, Mr. Apini. You're just making it harder on yourself. She shrugs dispassionately and continues leading them down the passage. It will be extracted. No, it won't. He voluntarily gave me access to the entirety of his files. I personally copied the relevant ones. Upon release of Miss Thornton and Mr. Knight, they will be handed over to you. Singh insists, and it stops Famulus in her tracks. His neural net will not be compromised. We need him fit for trial. Miss Thornton and Mr. Knight will be released upon proof of innocence. No sooner. Famulus crosses her arms and purses her lips. Is she okay? Stinger asks with desperation in his voice. She is alive. Famulus lets her annoyance show by giving as little information as possible. That is all you need know. Stinger lunges at the nimble deer splice and demands, What have you done with her? I won't talk until I see her. Without making it even a fuck, he's tackled and shoved to the ground by Captain Singh and her guards, before Famulus can order him shot by the company of Sims surrounding them. Singh moves almost nose to nose with him as she says, Old man, you're not really helping. They carry him face down by the arms and legs. Not fighting the guards physically, he pants with the exertion as he screams, She's in danger! Bring him, Famulus commands tersely. She carries herself with an air of satisfaction as she hears him being dragged along behind her. Previously on Captain Singh's ship, when the transmission with Famulus ends, Singh uncuffs Stinger as she expresses her concern. He'd contacted her and Kane to help as soon as the message from Bridget arrived. She verifies. Are you absolutely sure of her innocence, old man? Positive, Stinger stands his ground. I shouldn't be placing trust in you again, she grumbles. What is she, your latest conquest? Kane, by a vid screen, crosses his arms and leans back into his chair to listen. These two are always entertaining. No, I didn't run fast enough. Stinger admits sheepishly, then gains a bit of his old bravado again. Well, Mika, you aren't jealous, are you? Captain Singh pshaws him. Got over you night on a century ago, old man. She has no idea how much trouble you are. That's the funny thing. She's the trouble between us. She's downed hard to keep up with, even for this old hand. 
He fiddles with the cuff of his sleeve and kicks the ground. Introduce me to her, then. She doesn't know our past. Diomika is intrigued. A girl that keeps Stinger a penny on his dolls? It's worth meeting. Um, she knows some of it. Stinger bites his lip and feels Captain Sing towering over him. And how long have you known this girl? Diomika demands. A little over a week. Had two and a half bloody amazing days with her. Impetuous idiot! Her eyes go heavenward. Patience for Stinger needs to be eternal, and hers is not today. What? She's a hurricane, and I was in her path. Now he's downright indignant. Kane pipes in for his commanding officer. I met her briefly. She's a real spitfire. Watch your tongue, boy. Stinger growls in a low rumble. Stinger, to put up with you, she has to be. King grins as he prods his CO just to rile him up. That lot of respect you have. Stinger has turned to crouching loudly since threatening didn't get his way. His eyes are flashing gold again. His accent increases with his temper as he demands of Diomika. We're going to get her or what? Captain Singh arches an eyebrow and narrows her eyes in a I'm going to make you back down look that he's been on the wrong end of a few too many times. Save the tood for the rescue, Sting. I'm still put out with you over the Jupiter incident. He leans back on the console behind him and bites his tongue. Everything inside him wants to lash out right now, but he's got to cap it for when it's needed. Hear you loud and clear, Captain. Mr. Procadium, open a portal to the Clipper D Gamma 9's last known coordinates. She finally issues the command he was waiting for. Kane says he'll see them on the other side. Thank you, he says under his breath to sing as he looks at the floor. You will introduce me to her. She books no disappointment. She wants to meet you, too. I'm going to sit before Portal. She reclaims her captain's chair. You do realize she and I are going to gang up on you. Oh, shit. In the cell block, Stinger is set kneeling before the grate, looking into Mr. Knight and Bridget's cell. Bridget! Stinger howls and struggles against his bonds, upset by the scene below him. Mr. Apini! Mr. Knight looks up from dabbing Bridget's face with the lacy handkerchief. Rest assured, she will be right as rain soon. Bridget is unconscious and there's bruising on her arms and hand marks on her neck near the implant. Captain Singh kneels beside Stinger and puts a comforting hand on his shoulder. Calm yourself, old man. But... He rasps helplessly, still struggling, his eyes are pleading. Sting, we'll get her out of there. She gives a squeeze before standing again. Famulus, you and I both know the only way to get him to calm down is to let him in there. The head steward rolls her eyes. He's pathetically predictable. The only thing exciting today was seeing him hold in. She motions downward for a guard to open the grate. As soon as it's open enough, he jumps to his feet, and the guards grab his arms while Sing undoes his cuffs. Stepping voluntarily out into the nothingness, he lands in a crouch as the grate closes above him. Mr. Knight moves gingerly out of the way as he informs Stinger. She put up quite a fight. Tillon thought he could hold her down himself, but it took two sims in addition. She was out for the extraction so there will be no lasting damage. Only then does Stinger see the similar marks on the rat splice, who remarks, My pale skin bruises easily. I didn't struggle. Still, Stinger's brows furrow as he offers a tad of sympathy. Scooping Bridget up, he leans against the wall, cradling her in his lap. Securing her with one arm, he holds out a hand. May I? Without a word, Knight passes the handkerchief. Stinger tenderly brushes the hair out of her eyes with it, then folds it over and lightly goes over the bruises, hoping to wipe the ugly marks away. Finally, he checks her implant for signs of damage, running his fingers over it and laying the cloth over it and the worst of the marks. Tomed implants. Hesitantly, he offers his hand. Thank you for watching over her. Knight acknowledges the gesture with the merest nod and accepts the proffered hand. 
a little surprised over the shake at first. It was the least I could do. She stood up for me to that vile trader, even before we were working together. He as tactfully as possible pulls out another kerchief and dabs at his neck, then looks a little abashed as he wipes a hand that shook Stinger's own. Quite sake, man, it's just sweat. Stinger glowers and the rat's splice shrinks. He places his lips on Bridget's forehead for a moment before breaking the uneasy silence. How long do you think she'll be out? Would it hurt to wake her? Mr. Knight brings a finger to his mouth in thought. I'm unsure of when she would naturally, but a simple stimulant should do the trick. They used a nerve pinch to knock her out. Not moving his head, but glancing in his peripheral vision, and seeing those above are busy discussing the legalities of handing over the info, he mouths a single word tonight. Installed? Motionless, he responds. Yes, I believe Captain Singh could ask for a stimulant for her. His clever cover earns him a small one-sided grin from Stinger. When he hears Captain Singh mention that the culprit is not yet in custody, Famulus actually shows a little temper and stomps her foot. That's what I told you. Everyone has been waiting on lockdown while Mr. Apini has a tearful reunion. Directing her attention to Stinger once more, Singh asks, Stinger, now that you've seen Miss Thornton, are you ready to give your information? He gives a clear. Yes, Captain. I'd like to ask for a gentle stimulant to wake her up, though, first. Looking to her medical officer, Singh nods in the direction of the holding cell. After it's administered, Stinger finally says, It's Tillin Montaigne. He works for your nearest competitor outside of Titus's family. Knight sent me copies of his transmissions. Singh adds as she hands a small sheave to Famulus. Contact your lord and tell him to prepare for a neural net freeze. You won't want Montaigne to do a memory wipe. Lieutenant Wise will intercept if anyone tries to leave. Bridget starts to stir and Stinger runs a thumb over her cheekbone as he whispers. Hey, sleepyhead. Stinger, how'd you get here? She blinks at the light streaming into the cell. He shades her eyes for her with his hand before she hugs him fiercely. That's not important right now. The three of us will be out of here soon. How are you feeling? A nasty headache, but otherwise I think I'm okay. The stimulant should help with that in a few takes. Mr. Knight can't help but butt in. Miss Bridget, he was positively rabid upon seeing you in an unconscious state. The memory of him being carried in like that will stay with me for a long time. I'm honestly surprised even you, with your charm, could affect such a callous old soldier in such a short time. Shut your gob, rat. Knight silently chuckles to himself. She chides him affectionately. My dear cantankerous old codger, do be nice to my friend. If it wasn't for him, we would have no proof and no way out of this. He was shitting me. Stinger is appalled. The rat started it. Her eyebrow lifts in his direction, but she speaks to the rat splice. Mr. Knight, if you would refrain from baiting my boyfriend, I would appreciate it. Oh, she wish, miss. Chicanery suppresses a smirk. Stinger switches the subject before the rat can find a way around that request. This is even bigger than you two were able to dig up. There's a conglomeration working against Titus to stop him from fully developing the new process. There's another spy working with him, but ID unknown at this point. What did you just say? Famulus looks down at Stinger both figuratively and literally. You heard. It's on that sheave. Don't lose it. Stinger ignores her after that. Singh taps her neck upon receipt of a message. It's time, ladies and gentlemen. Activate your neural net block inhibitors. Stinger looks up at her with a nod and taps his neck. None of the crew does. They already had theirs activated. The sims around slump powerless, and Famulus motions for Singh and her crew to follow. She wants to be at her lord's side through his vulnerable moments to protect him. When the coast is clear, he helps Bridget up, and then unfastens and removes his jacket, handing it to her. She gives him a funny look until she sees the three pistols strapped around him and his wingtips already sticking out of the shirt's wing slits. I'll break out. Mr. Knight is not amused. Firefights are not his thing. He truly hopes there won't be one. Would you rather wait here like a sitting duck, 
As soon as that net blocker went into effect, the mystery of Pope will be on the run, and may want to shut us up permanently. Stinger reasons, as Bridget helps herself to his portable armory. I assume you received the code for the cell from Captain Singh. You could have just asked me. Knight shares. Stinger taps the back of his neck to open the cell. Knight, you go first. I can't lift the both of you. Putting on Stinger's Aegis jacket, she watches as Stinger interlaces his fingers, and Chicanery Knight gingerly puts his foot there to be hoisted. She calls up. Nice ass, Mr. Knight. It derails him for a second. Madam! But then he manages to scramble out more quickly. Stinger glowers and then rebounds. Oh, are you suggesting we become a threesome? Because I don't think I can share you. She sees Knight fanning himself above as she zings. It would be me having to share, I suspect, and I don't think I can either, my dear old codger. But never fear, Mr. Knight seems to have plenty of prospects, don't you, Knight? That is true, miss. One of the perks in working for Lord Titus instead of Lord Balem. Knight gives a considering expression. Stuffing the pistol in her back pocket, then she leans into him and tucks her chin into the crook of his neck. God, I missed you. He lets his wings unfurl and snap as he embraces her, too. Me, too. Bending his knees for a little extra boost, his wings hum and send the air swirling around them before they rocket out of the cell. You missed yourself? She quips as he lets her down. You know what I meant, woman? Exasperation tints his voice as he holds a pistol out to chicanery. Now, do both of you know how to use these? Mr. Knight holds up his hands. I would prefer not to carry one. Shrugging, as he returns the pistol to its holder, he focuses on Bridget. He hears the familiar whine of the weapon charging as it's taken off safety. Good girl. What should I expect for recoil and how many shots in the cartridge? She inquires as she tests the aim at the wall across from them. Minimal. Fifty shots. More cartridges in my pocket. How's your aim? He responds as he charges his own weapon. Acceptable? I was on a paintball team a few years ago, and my son loves laser tag, so I can handle rudimentary tactics too. His appreciative one-sided grin lasts for a moment, before he remembers the urgency. If we had time, I'd snap a picture of you looking so badass. He sighs and activates his mag shield. Take us to Titus. Knight, at least carry a shield so we won't be flanked easily. He pulls up his pant leg and removes an additional wristband. Knight reluctantly holds out his arm, and Stinger slaps it on. You will flank. Bridget is your cover. I'll lead. 